Ukraine 2014. Body cam footage shows the Donetsk People's Republic help Gary Curtis escort reporters to an airport. Here, with Iraqi special forces protecting journalists again. Above, drones controlled by ISIS are ready to drop grenades if they can get within range. For Gary, nine years as a Royal Marine meant deployment around the globe. And since 2007, he's used his experience in close protection to guide journalists through war zones. Looking after the media is what I love doing because you're not in a big, a big team. The job there is like a role reversal from the close protection work that we're doing. When things were kicking off, your job is to get them out of trouble and away from trouble. Zigzag, good, good, good. Yeah. Away you go, go. Whereas when you're working with the media, you're getting the people into trouble. You're taking them down onto the front line. You're taking them into a firefight as such. But allowing the media to tell the story comes with a cost. A load of Gaddafi troops come up behind us and we was held against their will at a hotel in Tripoli uh, for five days. Narrow escape in 2011 was followed by sickness, injury and relationship struggles. Three years on, in Ukraine, escorting crew through the MH17 crash site left a mark. Parts of the aircraft were still on fire. In an aircraft seat in his chair was, was a guy, dead just strapped in his seat. I was like, oh, right, wow. And I come across a little boy. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'll take your time. Yeah, so, emotionally for me, I, I leave it all there. Uh, my problems back here in the world, it just becomes, I feel like a sheep, feel like a robot over here. Um, I see someone push that, an adult, push that button at the side of the road to cross the road. And I'm like, why have you done that? Why, why have you just pushed that button to cross the road? And how do you tell people about like a VBID going off just down the road in front of you? Or you, what you perceive to be a suicide bomber that's just pulled up just in front of you as you're in low profile? All the savings that I made, started going because she's self-employed. They started going. So I nearly lost my house. I lost my girlfriend. After a couple of years of surgery, got really depressed. And my little girl said to us, can I have some school shoes, Dad? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just think, oh, I ain't got no money. Feeling disconnected from home life, the balancing act soon became too much to bear. I decided that I'd be better off no longer here. And I knew how I was going to end my life. Um, ironically, with the medical kit that would, I'd take away to save lives, you know, that day, almost took my life. Gary miraculously survived his suicide attempt, opening up on mental health a year later in his book, Incoming. I wrote the book because of what became my perfect storm. I just thought, you know, even just a couple of days later, I was thinking, wow, how did Gary Curtis break? What was, what was all that about? <laughs> Some people, what a chase war and think it's glorious and they think, oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it's lively. Yes, you're not going to, uh, you ain't going to get that feeling back here, you know. But it's scary. It's real. 